vibrations travel through three tiny bones to the cochlea. The brain interprets these vibrations, and that's how we hear. Did anyone hear me? Oh, Echo, at least you were listening. Actually, I was wondering if I could borrow your charger. My phone's almost dead, and I'm in the middle of a really interesting conversation. Echo, you still there? Yeah, sorry. So, did the squirrel ever get the jar open? Is everybody in my class talking while I'm teaching? You're listening to Drive Time with Derby. The topic today is boring teachers. Derby, are you hosting a radio call-in show during my class? Some would say you're teaching a class during my radio call-in show. <laughs> caller, you're on the air. Hi, long-time listener, first-time caller. I'm principal of Finnick, a local high school. And we have some of the worst teachers. One of them's a kid. A kid teacher? That is wild. You know what? Since you guys like talking in class so much, I'm going to give you an assignment where you get to talk in class. I'm talking about oral presentations. Each of you will tell the class about a great scientific discovery. You mean, like, cheese? I was thinking something more significant. Something that's had a real impact on human civilization. So, like, spray cheese? Well, if you want my advice, Principal X, I'd kick that kid teacher to the curb. Okay, we've got another caller. You're on the line with Derby. Derby, get off the air! We're gonna take a short break. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> Thank you, Ken, for that enlightening look at one of the world's greatest discoveries, the bus pass. <laughs> and that was my presentation on one of the world's greatest discoveries, sarcasm. <laughs> Echo, would you like to... Don't say marry me, don't say marry me. Go next. <laughs> sure. One of the greatest scientific discoveries ever was made by a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Always open with a joke. It's not a joke. I'm talking about Polish-born Marie Curie, who was the first person to win two Nobel Prizes. Yeah, for her research on the radiation phenomenon, again for twin discoveries of radium and polonium. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> She was studying radiation in Paris in the late 19th century while living with her husband, Pierre. Marie, ma chérie, I am home. Pierre, how was your day lecturing at the university? Oh, come see, come ça. I tried to teach, but my students just took. Oh, I caught one of them with a the phone and had to confiscate it. Oh. off the table. It's time for dinner. Ooh. <laughs> what are we having? <laughs> Don't touch that. It's polonium. <laughs> Never heard of it. That's because I just discovered it. Why can't you use a cookbook like other wives? <laughs> polonium is poisonous and highly radioactive. It can't be worse than your pierogies. <laughs> anyway, I've invited another scientist over, someone I met at that physics conference in Belgium. Guten Tag, Marie! I see you're dressed a little more conservatively than when you were at that conference. Skinny dipping. Albert, this is my husband, Pierre. He's Einstein? <laughs> Seriously? And you're married to her. You really want to start pulling threads? <laughs> Knock, knock! 
Who are you supposed to be? I'm Mrs. Byrne. <laughs> I'm here to borrow a cup of sugar from you. But I'd rather he gave me some sugar. <laughs> Why did I come here instead of Roy's barbecue? You don't know what you're missing. I have the most delicious mother. <laughs> Potato salad. <laughs> I don't know what happened. That just slipped out. I've got to go. My mother is smoking. The turkey is smoking. Why do I keep doing that? Not this. This is polonium. <laughs> nope. That's radium. <laughs> ah, here's the sugar. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't store this next to the radioactive isotopes. <laughs> So what's for dinner? Are you sure you wouldn't like a pierogi? No, thanks. Those things are fatty, and I plan to live a long life. <laughs> oh. Toodaloo. Oh, no. Did you guys drink my radioactive isotopes? No, nine. <laughs> that stuff can cause horrible mutations. Uh, look at us. We are horribly mutated. <laughs> ah! You are horribly mutated. I knew. That's what I just said. Everything I say sounds like mockery because I'm French. <laughs> and then Pierre Curie and Albert Einstein did the monster mash. <laughs> the end. Thank you, Echo, for... Don't say coming into my life. Don't say coming into my life. That occasionally accurate story about Marie Curie. <laughs> and for coming into my life. Who would like to go next? You're listening to Drive Time with Derby, and we're talking about lame homework assignments and how to get out of them. Derby, let's hear your presentation. If you have any suggestions, call in now. Oh, or send in your scientific discovery paper in the next 30 seconds and get a free Drive Time with Derby baby doll t-shirt. <laughs> Okay, Derby. What great discovery will you be presenting? Oh, I have an idea. <laughs> oh no, it's gone. <laughs> and now it's back. <laughs> Who can tell me what this is? That's right. It's a fat lady leaning over to pick up a light bulb. <laughs> Interesting story about the light bulb. <laughs> Look, Tesla. <laughs> yes, Mr. Edison. <laughs> you know how girls love to dance? Not really. <laughs> well, they do. With me. And why wouldn't they? I'm smart, I'm charming, I don't have a hump. My shoulders are even. I can sleep on my back. I get it! That's why I've invented the phonograph, to impress the lovely Mina Miller. Tommy, I'm here. What did you want to show me? This. Oh, you're quite a good dancer. And what even shoulders? <laughs> you blew out the candle. Now I see what's going on here. You just want to get fresh with me. Well, I'm not that kind of girl. I'd slap you if I could see you. <laughs> oh, there you are. <laughs> that was me. Well. Pass it on. As you wish. <laughs> Why do these candles keep going out? Because when you twirl, you create wind, which extinguishes the flame by pushing it away from its fuel. The weak. I can see why you're single. <laughs> so what I need is a light source that is immune to wind. Hmm. What could that be? Eureka, I have an idea. Ow. 
My idea is to stand far away from my idea. <laughs> Tesla, have you found the proper conductor for my light bulb filament yet? Would you just get off my back? Are you talking to me or your hump? <laughs> What's the holdup? We'll keep trying until we get it right. Tesla, you think this is gonna blow up again, don't you? I've got a hunch. Oh, so yes. <laughs> I'll be safe under this blanket. <laughs> mm -hmm. Feels pretty good to be right. <laughs> Little hotter than I expected. Look how long that thing is burning. Ah! It just keeps burning and burning and burning. Ah! Tesla, come here. Thank you, as you were. Ah! I've invented a new light from a carbon fiber filament. Just for you. Just for you. Help me screw it in. Okay, I'll hold the light bulb still. You two turn the base. Why don't you just turn the light bulb? <laughs> Look at that. Try to blow it out. See? I never knew brands could be so interesting. You know. I'm pretty smart, too. They're not that interesting. <laughs> Mrs. Byrne, what are you doing here? I heard the music. Sorry if our dancing was disturbing you. Nonsense. I love dancing, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, shake it. Shake that moneymaker! <laughs> oh, I think I'm going to be sick. And that's why the greatest scientific discovery of all time is the blindfold. For my presentation, I chose the discovery of fire. Oh, because it revolutionized human development, altering everything from the way we eat to the tools we use to where we live? No. Because it got a book of great discoveries, and fire was on page one. <laughs> Look at her. She's so beautiful. <sighs> but she won't give me the time of day. Mostly because we have no system for telling time. If you like her so much, just ask her out. Club her over the head. I like to think we're more evolved than that. <laughs> so, what do you have for lunch today? Berries and a dead ferret. Ow! Okay, nearly dead. Hey, cave nerd! <gasps> I'm hungry. This is all my mom packed me for lunch. If you want food, you, you could do some hunting and gathering. Or go to the drive-thru. Yeah. I don't have a car. You should get one. <laughs> These things are so much easier than walking. <laughs> it's a living. <laughs> anyway, give me your lunches. Soggy flies, a dead ferret, ow, okay, nearly dead. You know, it would be nice if once in a while you had a hot lunch for me to steal. A hot lunch? There's no such thing as a hot lunch. The saying is, there's no such thing as a free lunch. 
Which is weird, because all my lunches are free. He means no one's yet discovered a method to heat food. Well, when you better discover it by the time Big Yellow Skyball disappears and comes back again? You mean tomorrow? You know I'm not an early adopter of new words. <laughs> anyway, I want a hot lunch to tooth crunch in my face hole. Or else. <laughs> Oops, that's my dating club. <laughs> this is my threatening club. <laughs> I'll be back in a down up big yellow sky ball. <laughs> okay, if we're gonna heat up food, we just need something hot. She's hot. <laughs> so hot. Not hot enough to make hot lunch. Mm. We just need to concentrate. <laughs> Wait, I have an idea. Oh no. Never mind, I don't. Maybe we can ask her for advice. <laughs> Mrs. Byrne, are you busy? Yes, I've got to go prepare the lesson for my history class. <laughs> Although it shouldn't take long because there is no history. <sighs> we just have to tell Slab it's impossible to make hot food. Good idea. Let me know how it goes. And if I don't hear from you, I'll just assume not well. <laughs> Why do I have to do it? Fine. We'll settle this with a game of rock, rock, rock. <laughs> rock, rock, rock! Rock beats rock. Sorry, man. Good luck. And don't worry, I'll memorialize you in a cave painting. <laughs> stink at this game. Hey, rock doesn't beat rock. Sure it does. No, nothing would happen if two rocks hit each other. Look. What was that? I don't know. But I think before we try it again, we should take proper precautions. I just created something hot! Do you know what this means? Yes, we now have a system by which we can heat up lunch for a slab. I didn't think of that. It means I have a chance to make up a new word. Look at this thing. It's so majestic, so beautiful, so mesmerizing. I will call it. <laughs> You're gonna name it after your mom? <laughs> well, I'm not gonna name it after my dad, Fire. Mm, this hot lunch is delicious. Hey! Get out of the road! <laughs> what happened to my horn? Funny story. We cooked it and Slav's eating it. <laughs> <laughs> that is a funny story. I don't find it funny. <laughs> but you're big, so... <laughs> Well, now that you've got your hot lunch, I guess you'll leave us alone? Not likely. <laughs> I'm still hungry. Now bring me another car horn. For dessert, fruit ball pie. <laughs> ah! So, in conclusion, fire good. Derby. <laughs> your mailbox was full, so I brought by my idea for your presentation. The worst scientific discovery ever, gravity. If that clown Newton had left well enough alone, my hair wouldn't have fallen out. It would be hovering over my head. It's supposed to be the greatest discovery ever? What? So I don't get the baby doll t-shirt? 
But it would have gone so well with these Daisy Dukes. Well, we've heard about some amazing and not so amazing discoveries today. Bus pass, the light bulb, fire, radiation, the spork. And, of course, the pull my finger game. No, I'm not falling for that again. Anyway, who can say what the greatest scientific discovery really is? I can. It is, of course, the adult absorbent undergarment, which was invented during a time of great adversity. Who has heard of the War of 1812? I was in a foxhole loading my musket when I realized I've had too much sarsaparilla. But it's not safe to leave my foxhole. I need some sort of absorbent undergarment. I could fashion it out of this potato sack, fill it with cotton, and cinch it up with some twine. 